All right, so this is going to be a follow-up vlog to the Logan analysis vlog. In that vlog, I talked about things that I've picked up in cross-examining people over the years of litigation. So I'm gonna talk about what a good examination is and does. And in a way, it's very analogous to what a good vlog is and does or should do. A good examination has to have an object and a purpose, and it has to be relatively absent of unintended distractions. I also want you to appreciate that whenever I do that walk-off sequence, I have to run back to actually get my camera because it doesn't follow me home on its own. Take this vlog, for example, right now. Behind me, you have colorful sign, traffic noise. There could be legitimate strategic reasons for which you want to distract your viewers in a vlog or why you want to distract the person you are examining in the context of an examination. Distractions can be a good way to get someone to feel comfortable or uncomfortable, depending on what you want the person being interrogated to feel. Sometimes you need to make someone feel either uncomfortable or comfortable in order to get the truth out of them. We're gonna to get to that in a second. Go, guys. A mistake that lawyers often make going into examinations is going in without any sort of strategic objective or planned purpose. Basically just going in, asking some questions, meandering around. Some lawyers cynically refer to examinations as easy billing because you go in, you put in the hours, and then you bill for them. But an examination without a purpose is a waste of time. And in the same sense, to follow the analogy, a vlog without a purpose, it's potentially a waste of time. You have to have an objective, you have to have a goal, and you have to know where you're going if you want to get there. Let's roll, dogs. I can hear a few of you saying to yourselves, but Dave, the purpose of the examination is obviously to get the truth. Oh, how I envy your youthful naivete. This working station is a pig stunt. Paper towels, glow in the dark ping pong balls, I got these. Okay, we're gonna clean up, we're gonna come back to this. If you think the purpose of an examination is to get the truth, you are going to be very, very disappointed in your legal career. The purpose of an examination is to gather information. Incidentally, examinations have a couple of names. You have examinations, interrogations, discoveries, depositions. A discovery is a very apt term for it because you are going into this to discover information. You're not going to get the truth during the examination. You're just going to get information. Okay, this is better. Now I've got to eat breakfast. Kitchen salad. This room is more of a disaster than my working table. Ugh. Ugh. Number one choking hazard among children are balloons. Destroy, discard, ow! Destroy and discard. Okay, that's a little better. Or at least as good as it's gonna get. All right. I said you have to have a clear objective when you get into an examination, much like you have to have a clear objective when making a vlog. But one of the biggest mistakes, or the other biggest mistake that lawyers make, is they go into an examination with their list of questions, with their outline, they check off one question after another, ask the question, write the answer, and they don't actually listen to the answers, and they don't actually follow the flow of the examination. I said an examination is called a discovery. You will discover things during an examination. They will never be a run-of-the-mill, come in, get your answers, and leave. They develop, things come up out of nowhere. And if you're not listening to the answers and you're just focused on your questions, you're gonna miss potentially the most beautiful detours that are gonna bring the biggest developments to your file. Sort of like shooting a vlog and just being fixated on getting the setting sun and not seeing a hawk eating a pigeon in a park in downtown Montreal. True story. You have to have a plan, you have to have an outline, but you cannot be blind to the evolution, to the development, to the revelations that might just pop out of nowhere in the middle of a good examination. Things that make an examination bad, I'm prefacing this by saying that I've made these mistakes, I suffered from some of these flaws. One of which was arguing with opposing counsel as opposed to interrogating the witness. A lot of lawyers, myself included until I learned, think that they're gonna score points by arguing with opposing counsel, by being smart with opposing counsel, by getting a good quip or an insult to opposing counsel. I 
I don't want to get too much into procedure because it will vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but in Quebec, typically examinations were filed as transcribed depositions. So nobody's watching a video, nobody's listening to an audio. A judge is reading a transcript. When a judge is reading more banter between counsel as opposed to actual questions to the witness, they don't like it. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of sonographer's time, it's a waste of legal fees to the client. They just don't like it. The purpose of the examination is to get information out of the witness, not to show how witty and, and sharp-tongued you are with opposing counsel. And getting back to the purpose of the examination, not to be getting the truth, you can't control what you get out of the witness. You are going to get information. You don't know if it's going to be true or false. And the interesting thing about litigation, there was a subscriber who commented on one of my videos, and I don't remember which one, but he said, oh, I'd love to be examined. And I said, nobody likes being examined. Being examined by a lawyer is like going to the dentist. Even when your teeth are clean, perfect, immaculate, it still hurts and it's still an unpleasant experience. It's the one sort of industry where you know with certainty that that lawyer is not there to help you or represent you. Period. It is adversarial by its very nature. When you are being examined by opposing counsel, it's not fun, it's not liberating. That lawyer is there to get something out of you that's gonna help his client, period. So with that said, what makes for a good examination? You're not necessarily gonna get the truth. You can probably bank on the fact that you're not gonna get the truth, but you can try. And in trying, the question you ask yourself is, what makes someone lie? Now, people can lie out of malice or fear. They can lie to protect themselves or they can lie to hurt others. You have to gauge the person that you're examining and what their motivation is going to be to lie. Are they lying out of fear? If they're lying out of fear, there are two ways to approach the witness. Both can be effective in getting the truth. A fearful witness can be intimidated by, let's call it threats, but they can be intimidated by power, by force, by intimidation tactics like reminding them that they're under oath and that if they lie, it constitutes perjury. The fearful witness can sometimes be bullied into telling the truth, and I say bullied in the legal sense, or the fearful witness sometimes needs reassurance in order to feel comfortable to elect the truth. So the fearful witness is not necessarily fearful out of malice. They're not fearful because they want to hide something. They just, they're just scared. They need to be reassured that it's safe for them to give you the truth. Now, the people who lie out of malice, you can adopt the same sort of strategy. Make them feel comfortable so that they don't feel like they have to be malicious or intimidate the living daylights out of them. Remind them they're under oath. Tell them that lying constitutes perjury. There's all sorts of intimidation tactics that a good lawyer can adopt in an examination to scare the witness into telling the truth. You know, at this point in the video, I think we're gonna change rooms because this is getting boring and it's a beautiful day outside. So let's just carry this on, on the roof, shall we? Oh. Someone once asked me what my favorite law movie was and I don't know, I, I think without a doubt, it's a civil action with John Travolta and Robert Duvall. And there's a great line in the movie, which is, it's a totally Hollywood line, but it's, there's a, an element of truth to it. Robert Duvall says, a good lawyer never ever asks a question that they don't know the answer to. Um, and there's a great bit of truth to that, which is that what makes for a good examination is preparation. It's knowing your facts and knowing as much of the information as possible before heading into the examination. If a lawyer asks a question that he or she doesn't know the answer to, they're never going to know if they're being lied to. So you ask a question, it's great, you get a total rubbish lie of an answer. In reality, you can go after the fact and cross-check that answer, and if it turns out to be a total lie, you can summon the witness back to re-examine them. So there is an element of truth to the statement, but there's also the Hollywood sort of catch line that it creates which is like a great lawyer never asks a question if they don't know the answer to it. Well, it's true because you don't want to get lied to and not know that you're getting lied to. But in reality, if that happens, you can always summon the witness back or call the witness back in front of a judge to cross-examine the witness again on now what you can prove to be a lie of an answer. But preparation, 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 so that you can catch the witness in a lie at the moment they are uttering a lie. Nothing destabilizes a witness more than being caught in a lie as they're uttering it. And the more prep that you do for an examination, the more likely it is that you're going be able to do that. If you have a document that says X and you ask the witness and the witness says Y and you pull out that document during the examination, you say, care to explain this then, watch the demeanor of that witness change in a, in a heartbeat. And, and preparation is important for other things. You need to understand the file. You need to know where to go with one question after you get the answer, if the answer is not exactly what you thought it was gonna be. Preparation is so important in order to know what questions to ask in the first place. If you don't understand fishing, you're not gonna be able to conduct a good examination of a fisherman. If you don't know the terminology, if you don't know the techniques, if you don't know the strategy, if you don't know about fishing in and out, you're not gonna be able to conduct a useful examination of a fisherman. I have no idea what context there could be litigation surrounding a fisherman where your terminology would be 
be necessary, but whatever. It's actually one of the reasons why Howard Stern conducts the absolute best interviews in the world. First of all, I don't know if it's him or a massive team. They have knowledge and they have information on the person that they are interviewing. They have tidbits of information of the person they're interviewing that the person has no idea how Howard Stern and his team knows. It's amazing. So knowing things about your subject is the easiest way to actually get meaningful questions to them. The other thing that Howard Stern does, which is so good, is he gets people to feel so comfortable. So comfortable that they'll elect any piece of information. And he does it through a variety of manipulation tactics, some of which are playing along with the person, sort of adopting their mask mannerisms and adopting their traits and characteristics, their breathing patterns, their speech patterns. You'll notice when Howard Stern interviews people, he sort of takes on the jargon and, and, and the lingo that they use in their speech to get them to feel comfortable. Other times, he will pretend to have similar interests to them, or similar hatreds, or similar resentments. Uh, he will empathize with them by, uh, by giving anecdotes where he's suffered similar problems to them. So he has very, very subtle, very, very effective tactics of getting the interviewer to feel comfortable to give a good interview. This is what good lawyers can do in cross-examination. Litigation is adversarial by nature, but that doesn't mean that the lawyer can't do his best to sort of make the witness feel comfortable so that they don't feel like they're doing anything wrong by telling the truth. There are other witnesses where that's just not gonna work. The only thing the lawyer can do is stare them right in the eyes, not blink, look at them with a sense of, I don't believe anything you're saying and I'm gonna crush you if you lie to me, so you'd better darn well tell me the truth. This is the type of intimidation. It's like a bird sticking up its feathers when it's about to get into a fight or like a, a gorilla pounding on its chest. It's posturing, and good lawyers will posture either to make you feel comfortable or to make you feel like an insecure child who is in the principal's office about to get punished. I should bring this back to vlogging somehow. Now, well, the only part that really relates to vlogging is making people feel comfortable so that they look natural, they look authentic, and they don't look like they're rehearsed, they don't look like they're reciting lines, and they don't look like they don't want to be there. When someone is making a vlog and people in the vlog look like they don't want to be there, people are perceptive, people can see that. A vlog, be prepared, be planned, have done your research, especially if it's going to be an interview vlog, especially if you're going to be doing some sort of expose on uh, Just for Laughs. A tennis match, incidentally, I'm going to the Rogers Cup this weekend, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I was invited as me to this event where they have three chefs and a tennis player having some sort of cooking competition. So that is tomorrow by the time you see this video. The video should be up Saturday, hopefully maybe Sunday. Research, know what you're doing, know where you're going, but don't be blinded by your outline. Don't be, don't be so rigid that you cannot bend to the curves that are gonna come your way necessarily in the journey that is a vlog. Same thing as in an examination. Oh yes, another thing, be respectful to your witness. It doesn't matter if you hate them, it doesn't matter if they're a liar, it doesn't matter if they are the most scum of the earth human on earth. A judge is gonna read your transcript and judges like it when people treat people with respect, even if those people don't necessarily deserve respect. Same thing goes for vlogging, treat yourself subjects with respect. Exploitive vlogs, exploitive videos, they may get views, but they only go so far and people get tired of it quickly. This might be the point of the video where I remind you to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So here's the deal. Um, a subscriber in a comment in another video gave me some constructive criticism, legitimate points. They said multiple posts in one day bother me. Uh, I turned off the notifications because of it. Your shorter videos uh, I find distracting from the overall theme of the channel. This doesn't hurt. I, I, it, it doesn't hurt in the sense of emotionally scarring. I see what they're saying and I sort of understand that that's the risk of the type of channel that I have. I think the reality is that I have an eclectic channel that reflects a little bit of my mental state. It is non-linear. It's all over the place. It's insightful sometimes. It's humorous other times. It's totally random other times. I don't think I can change that. Maybe I will, but I think anybody who wants something of a much more structured, themed channel, um, you're going to have to take me for what I I am. Uh, I am going to add some structure. So the some structure is Montreal Mondays, Law Vlog Thursdays. I'm going to drop Throwback Thursdays because I think two videos in a day actually just dilutes from the Law Vlog. So Thursdays, Law Vlog Thursday. Wednesday, I'm thinking of like a one minute Wednesday. I'm thinking of a cooking Sunday or something. I'm open to suggestions. Anybody has any suggestions, let me know in the bottom. Comments, criticisms, whatever. I'm not sensitive. Tell me what you think. If you have interviews you want me to analyze, gosh, I would love to do that. Drop it in the comment section. DM me, email me, david at vivafry.com. I have all my P.O. box information is in my about. It's usually in each description. That's it. Subscribe. I like doing this. If you like it, let me know what you like. Although I'm not going to do what you like just because you like it. I may not do what you like even though it might be good just because I don't like it. But uh, let me know. Like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends, family, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents if you're lucky enough to have them. That's it. Peace out. And now I'm gonna find out if this was good or bad advice by asking someone who knows more than me. Dad? Yeah. In 30 seconds, what makes for a good cross-examination? Preparation. Okay, good. Okay, and what makes for a bad cross-examination? Chewing on the fly. Chewing on the fly? 
<laughs> no, really, what did he say? <laughs> he said doing it on the fly. What does that mean? Oh, God. Uh, okay. Kids are funny. See, it was good advice. Peace out.